In this talk, I would like to compare biparametric MRI with multiparametric MRI. First, these are my disclosures. Let's look at the value of local MRI. In the urological guidelines, it is now advised based on evidence that we should perform prostate MRI before any biopsy. So every man with a suspicion of prostate cancer needs to undergo an MRI. That means yearly 2 million more MRIs. This is an enormous tsunami. And how can we deal with this? Well, we need fast MRI. How can we go faster? Well, delete contrast. That's one of the things. Delete a few planes. Um, the question is, to DCE or not to DCE, what's the best? The pilot steering committee was clear. If you consider in deleting contrast, you need to have a high quality MRI and a high expert reader. And also, the patient should have be available to come back on a recall or you should have an on-table monitoring, which is quite time consuming for the radiologist. Now, since the narrative review of the Pirate Steering Committee, three other papers have appeared. The first one is by Wallström, and they evaluated the screening population, biparametric three-plane MRI versus multiparametric MRI. Detection rate of both techniques of any cancer was 15%. Unfortunately, they did not specify which patient had an insignificant cancer and which patient had a clinically significant cancer. The second study, also a screening population, one plane, biparametric MRI. And um, biparametric MRI was non-inferior. However, if you look at the data, you can see that with multiparametric MRI, you detect 9% more clinically significant cancers. This patient, however, was highly underpowered and used a rather old technique, a 1.5 Tesla endorectal coil MRI. The last study had to head comparison of more than 600 patients, prospective multicenter, compared multiparametric MRI versus three plane biparametric MRI versus one plane biparametric MRI. And that's called fast MRI. And fast MRI consists of T2 weighted imaging in the axial plane as well as diffusion weighted imaging in the axial plane. Now let's look at the results. With fast MRI, there was a slightly increased detection, 1% of insignificant cancer. 2% of men had an extra, 2% had an unnecessary biopsy. What's most important is that the detection rate of clinically significant cancer was equally high. 95%. Specificity was slightly lower, and with this, you would come to a conclusion that, well, why should we give contrast? If we don't do it, we don't have allergy, we have no gadolinium brain death position, it's less costly, and it's fast. But, there's a big but, it needs expertise. Now, let's zoom in into expertise. What does it mean? Let's look at the precision trial data. If you look at the expert central reads, you will see that the detection rate of PIRAT3, the I do not know diagnosis, is low. It's 6%. And this increases with an average evaluation of, the radi aver of, re evaluation of an average radiologist to 21%. And that's quite a lot. Let's look and go back to the paper with the 600 patients head to head comparison. If you look at multiparametric MRI, PIRAT3 is 6%. The three-plane biparametric technique is 8% and the FAST technique is 11%. Now, if we extrapolate the 6 to 11% of the 21% of the inexperienced readers, you will come to an unacceptable PIRAT3 diagnosis of almost 40%. So, if you are a non-expert, and then if you perform one plane biparametric MRI, you should be very careful. And that's one of the big reasons that, well, you should not automatically use biparametric MRI. You should ask yourself, how good am I? And what is my Pirates 3 percentage when I delete contrast? Is it acceptable? So, this actually was the reason that the Pirate Steering Committee said there is a need to have both an enhanced and MRI and a contrast enhanced MRI for prostate cancer diagnosis. We need more evidence. Now, a few words about costs. If you compare the direct costs 
of the biparametric MRI, the fast MRI, the biparametric MRI, and the multiparametric MRI, you will see that fast MRI is at the price of, in the Netherlands, the Dutch situation of 121 euros versus 264, so more than twofold, when you use multiparametric MRI. So it's quite cost effective to DCE or not to DCE. Well, what did we learn from this short overview? To DCE, previous negative patients with biparametric MRI with a persistent clinical suspicion, those patients should have contrast because there was an earlier negative MRI and the urologist is concerned. So you need to find a tumor and you're more sensitive when you give contrast, you better. Also, when you have significant DWI artifacts like hip prosthesis, then your reliable sequence, the dominant sequence for the peripheral zone has gone. So you, then you need contrast. And if you consider yourself of lower experience, then you also need to use contrast. No contrast, so use biparametric MRI. Well, you can consider that in a low risk population, for example, a screening population. Or when there is a very, very, very high chance of having a significant cancer, when there is a big cancer. In very big cancers, the obvious virus 5s, you don't need contrast. And a gadolinium on demand situation, like a callback of the patient or an on table evaluation, that of course is also um, can, be, can be done without contrast, because you give contrast if you need it. Now, take home messages. Biparametric MRI can be good, but it is for good prostate radiologist only. DCE helps to find a tumor, a small tumor, and it reduces uncertainty. I'm always happy when I have a DCE sequence because I'm a little bit more sensitive and I feel a little bit more confident. There is a prerequisite for biparametric MRI and this is most important. You need to have good quality images. I cannot emphasize this more. For this, we need to develop an objective quality assessment and quality control. And we now currently are working, working on the, the objective IQOL criteria. You should be able to measure your own quality. So go to the MDT and ask how good am I? If you don't use contrast, you should ask yourself, how good am I? Do I miss too many tumors? What's my pilot three? And last but not least, we need to work on training and certification. With this, I've come to the end of my talk and, uh, well, I'm open for any questions. Thank you very much for your attention.